What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into a Monday morning episode of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralt. You guys can follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt. And this podcast being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com. And we're starting off a new promotion. It is Father's Day time, guys. Yes, Mother's Day just passed. Father's Day rapidly approaching just around the corner. And what do you give to the guy who's got everything? Well, easy. You give him an experience he will never forget. You get him the Omaha Steaks. Why? World-class dads deserve a world-class steak. The Father's Day experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy for you to put a smile on the big guy's face this summer with their hand-selected packages like the Deluxe Father's Day gift. For just $89.99, this package includes an assortment of of grilling favorites that dad will love, like the Omaha Steaks Butcher's Cut Top Sirloin, juicy, boneless pork chops, deli-style gourmet franks, and their legendary Omaha Steak Burgers. Go to omahasteaks.com, use the promo code JUICE at checkout, and check out the Deluxe Father's Day gift, and you'll get four additional burgers absolutely for free for using the code JUICE. That's 24 unforgettable entrees for just $89.99 when you use that promo code JUICE at checkout. If there's one thing we know, dads want steak. Don't wait till the last minute. Go to omasteaks.com. Use the code JUICE. Get the Father's Day, the Deluxe Father's Day gift set, the Deluxe Father's Day gift package, plus four for free. Omaha Steak Burgers with the code juice at omahasteaks.com. Okay, some accounting to do here at the top because it was a busy week for us. We wound up profitable for the PGA Championship. We won 1.35 units thanks to Scotty Scheffler and Justin Thomas. We hit both those one-unit plays for their fourth and final round. Under 68.5 for Justin Thomas. He got the birdie on the 18th to get us there. And Scotty Scheffler, as predicted, ripped apart the course on Sunday. Scotty Scheffler goes easily under six, seven and a half for his final round. So we got two units there. Justin Thomas also came in the top 10. Now, again, you guys, some of you learned a harsh lesson. Do not bet golf at books that do not or that have dead heat rules because that went from a plus 430 to a minus 135? Is that right? How awful is that? No. Clean, clear, you know, crystal clear. Do not bet when books have dead heat rules. They change the odds. Meaning, like, I bet a half a unit. So let's just hypothetically say that, you you know, you bet 50 bucks, right? Half a unit, 50 bucks, 100 buck units, right? So you bet 50 bucks on that, right? At plus 430, you should have come back with over $200. Instead, they're going to hand you back, what, 40 bucks? Like, are you kidding me? Like, like you didn't lose money, but that's not what's supposed to happen there, okay? That is dead heat rules. It's a European thing. It's the worst thing that sports betting in America has ever gone into. It should be banned should be outlawed. You never should be able to change the odds. What is this, horse racing? You don't change the odds that you bet. Unbelievable. Just sorry. If you bet it, I apologize. But we got it there. Thanks, Justin Thomas. Plus 430 on JT. So that's a nice 2.15 unit win there on that half unit play on Justin Thomas. Brooks Kepka, we missed on that. We missed on a couple other things. Uh, you know, Rory, JT, missed a unit there. So... Um, we'll have to calculate the math there on that, but by my math, and we'll see if, you know, I'm not good at the math, but by my math, uh, winning day, winning week, hopefully that's true. Okay. I think that's right, but it's tight. It's a small, small margin. We may be like right there, maybe flat for the week. I don't, I'm not sure. There may be a half a unit that I'm missing somewhere with the math that I did, but it's close. Regardless, it's very close. We either were up like, you know, 0. 0.67, 0. 0.7 units, somewhere in that range. I mean, maybe we were flat, completely flat for the week. So winning day for sure on Sunday, meaning we did not really have a losing week. Probably had a winning week of a small margin. But regardless, it was a really good Sunday. So three and one, we should have gone four now. 
Denver Nuggets. I mean, what's that? <laughs> Luckily, the Pacers came in at plus 140. Did not even need to hedge off of the Pacers. But I was doing something, and I didn't watch. I went back and watched it after the fact, but I didn't see it live. I didn't see the collapse in the second half for Denver. So I didn't hedge. If I had saw it, I would have hedged. Biggest blown lead in the history of Game 7s. Up 20 points in a Game 7, and you lose at home. Thank you, Minnesota. Oh, thank you for taking out the Denver Nuggets. It's the one team that the Boston Celtics were absolutely a matchup mismatch against. Yes, incredibly athletic and very good Timberwolves, and it's not going to be easy at all. Some are crowning Boston already. Hold on. Boston is a gigantic favorite in the Eastern Conference Finals up against the Indiana Pacers, as they should be. They should beat Indiana in six. Okay, should be a 4-2 series for Boston. And then we go to the finals where we'll probably, Boston will probably see Minnesota. I think Minnesota's going to beat Dallas. I do. I think Dallas wins the cup in hockey. I think Dallas loses in basketball. But you know, Dallas has two teams alive in the Western Conference Finals. It's pretty good. Basketball and hockey. Boston's got one. That's it. Minnesota's got one. That's it. Indiana's got one. You have four teams left here in basketball and four teams left in hockey after tonight. Speaking of which, Game 7, Edmonton on the road at Vancouver. It's the first Game 7 since Vancouver lost to Boston in the Cup Finals. They rioted after that loss. Please don't riot, Vancouver, okay? Please don't do that. Total is 6, minus 115. I have no idea who wins. It's going to be an under game. I know we could push with a 4-2 open net type situation. That's possible. Don't bet five and a half. Bet six. Okay? Six and a half, even better. But we got a push potential, right? On 4-2 final, it's a push, and I'm okay with that. I think we're going to see a tight game. Not a lot of power plays. Hard to score. It's game seven. Okay? It's a game seven. And game sevens are huge, awesome, fun but really hard to score. Nobody wants to make a mistake. We're taking Edmonton, Vancouver, under six for 1.15 units, minus 115. Don't care about the goalies. Doesn't matter. Game will go the same. I don't care who's in net. Yes, one team might get killed. Like last game, 5-1 Edmonton, but that game still stayed on a push for six. Six is a key number in this series. Under six, Edmonton taking on Vancouver tonight in game seven. All right. To baseball we go. I got a 3-0 Friday and an 0-3 Saturday. We skip baseball on Sunday. Here we are on Monday. Two bets for us going up on a Monday. Let's start with Miami at home up against Milwaukee. Some really interesting stats. Now, Ryan Weathers for Miami is starting this game. He is horrific at home. 7.07 ERA. 14 innings, 17 hits, 11 earned runs given up at home so far for Ryan Weathers. Two and two and four, a three point eight one ERA overall. Joe Ross will go onto the bump for the Milwaukee Brewers. Ross better on the road than he is at home. Two point seven eight ERA on the road, six point eight seven ERA at home. But this game's on the road, so good for Joe Ross so far on the road. Joe Ross last time out on the road against Kansas City, three earned runs in five innings worth of work, six four loss. Game went over on the road against the Cubs, six innings, six hits. One earned run in a 3-1 win. Before that, gave up six earned runs to the Yankees at home. Got worked, but on the road against Pittsburgh, pitched pretty well. 4-2 loss, five and a third. One earned run, two runs overall given up so far for Joe Ross and the Milwaukee Brewers. But looking at the teams themselves, this is interesting. So Miami is 20-6 and six at home this year to the over overall. They are 9-3 at home as a dog in Milwaukee is favored here in this game against Miami. On the other side, Milwaukee, they're 14 and 11 when they're favored on the road this year to the over. And they're 17, eight and one to the over this year in non-divisional games, like not the Cubs, Miami, not a divisional game. Okay. 17, eight and one. I'm going to bet over, over eight 
Miami and Milwaukee over eight minus one fifteen in Major League Baseball. Let these bullpens get into it. Let's get some offense here for Milwaukee going. Let's get somewhere like a five four type of win here for Milwaukee up against the Miami Marlins. We're going over eight minus one fifteen, and finally, it's time. It's it's time to start paying attention to the Braves and the Braves unders. Have you guys been doing this? I haven't been doing this. I should have been doing this a long time ago. Since the 22nd of April, of April, the Atlanta Braves have gone under every single game except a push against Seattle on the 1st of May and over against the Dodgers on the 4th of May and the last game out against the Padres on the 19th of May. But every other game since then has been under. They are 26, 14, and 2 to the under on the year that is number one in Major League Baseball. They have gone 9 and 1 over the last 10 to the under against the National League. It's 14 and 12 to the under. At home, it's 14 and 8 to the under. And San Diego on the road is 12 and 11 to the under. They are equally looking at unders, although recently they have been going over against Colorado at home. All three games went over. First game against Atlanta went under. Second game last time out went over. 9-1 win. The total was nine. So just squeaked over. This total was eight and a half. Minus 115 is the juice on this. And I think, look, this number probably comes down. I'd be somewhat surprised if this number stays at eight and a half. My guess is it comes down, just given what we're going to see here from both starting pitchers. Still in cease up against Lopez. Lopez is a guy we bet last time he, Ronaldo Lopez, last time he pitched. He's 2-1 and one with a 1.34 ERA. At home, he has a .77 ERA, 1-0, and 23 innings worth of work, 14 hits, 2 earned runs. Opposing batting average of 177. You don't touch that guy. Lopez at home, you don't touch him. But Dylan Cease has been great for the Padres. You know, he stunk for the White Sox for a while. He was their ace, but... On the road, a 1.38 ERA with a 4-0 mark, a, an opposing batting average of 106, 32 and two-thirds worth of work on the road so far this year. 11 hits, just five earned runs given up. No home runs given up on the road so far for Dylan Cease. He's been tremendous. Five games started so far for him. Awesome, awesome start to the year for Dylan Cease. Five and three with a 2.45 ERA. Starts on the road for him against the Cubs. Seven innings, no earned runs given up. Arizona on the road, six and two thirds, one earned run given up. Against the Rockies, seven innings, one earned run given up. Against these Brewers, six innings, one earned run given up. On the road, he's tremendous. Total is eight and a half. We're going under. Braves, White Sox, sorry, Braves, Padres, not the White Sox, Braves, Padres, under eight and a half with Cease and Lopez on the bump for these two teams. First game was 3-1. Second game was rained out. Yesterday was 9-1. to one. Here we go again here. Double header. There's a double header going in this one. So this is important, okay? Whenever we have these games, starting pitchers matter, okay? This really does matter to me. We're talking about you know, for Milwaukee and Miami, it's a 340 Pacific time, 640 start. We're talking about the first game of the day for San Diego, Atlanta, not the double header, not the second game, the first game. Okay. The first game goes off 920 Eastern time, sorry, Pacific time, 1220 Eastern. Second game will happen at 320. That's Randy Vasquez against Chris Sale. We're not betting that game. We're betting the first game under eight and a half. Cease and Lopez, Padres at the Braves, under eight and a half. Okay, three bets for us here on a Monday. Let's start the week off in a good way. Vancouver, Edmonton, game seven, under six, minus 115. Miami, Milwaukee, under eight, minus 115. Atlanta, San Diego, under eight and a half. Game one of the doubleheader, minus 115. All on a Monday. Those are the bets in place. My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt every single morning. Daily Juice Podcast always being brought to you by OmahaSteaks.com.